Okay, this is Math 2, Unit 8, Lesson 4, looking at chords and arcs. This is homework help today, looking at a few problems from your homework. All right, um, this lesson today was dealing with a lot of things related to um, chords and arcs and how they are congruent from one circle to another, uh, depending on what's going on there. So a lot of these first questions are just simply wanting you to find the parts that are congruent. So for example, if I looked at number 1, I might say that SH, this chord here, I'm going to go ahead and mark it with just a one hash, uh, is congruent to AC, and that's because the circles are congruent, I can find some matching parts. As a result of that, I, might, I can also then say that the other part around this direction, I can put two hashes, is congruent to that half over there as well. I can do the same with a triangle and say, well, if that's true, then this line is equal to this line. And so a lot of what you're being asked to do in these first few problems, uh, numbers one and two, is to simply label the congruent parts between the two circles there. Let's move on to number three. Uh, number three wants you to find the value of x. And again, because these parts are congruent, if I have a line that starts in the center of the circle and comes down and forms a 90 degree angle or is perpendicular to a chord, to matching chords, then I know that it's going to bisect that chord into two equal parts. Um, and that means, and they show that by the hashed little, mar little mark here, that this part is congruent to that part and that part and that part. As a result, since we know that the one line hash is equal to 15, I can go ahead and write a 15 there to know that that's 15 here, but it also means that this is 15. X is the combined value, this whole line, so essentially it's just 15 plus 15, which is 30. And that's really all you're being asked to do there for number three. For number five, another one I want to look at here with you, same idea. So again, this is the point in the middle of the circle. We are bisecting the line with a perpendicular uh, line and making a 90 degree angle. So we have two equal parts here. I have this part, I have the hashtag of four, or four. And so what I know is, um, well, sorry, the four is the length here of this little small little bit from the center. The long line of this chord is 25, um, I don't know, inches, whatever, 25 units. As a result of knowing that this is going to cut this in half too, just like before, I know that this whole length of this line is also 25. What the problems ask me though is what is essentially half of that? What is one of those parts? So what it's wanting you to do is to take 25 and divide it in half, ending up with 12.5. And that's all you're being asked to do for number five. Four is similar in that regard, too. You can look at it and say, oh, I have a nine, I have a nine, I have an 18. Well, which part of the X is going to match with over here? Oh, it's the part coming out of the center. That's going to match that. Oh, that's going to also be an eight. Same idea. So you look at number seven, eight, nine, and once you kind of decide if something is true or always true, let's look at the back side, number 10, 12, and 13 here. All right. For number 10, um, what it says is in the diagram at the right, ST is the diameter of the circle, and ST and, uh, is perpendicular to QR. So this is the diameter, and it's a perpendicular to this point, which means I have right angles right there. And it wants to know what kind of conclusions can I make if that is true. Well, if that's true, there are a few conclusions that you can indeed make. I could say that QU right here is congruent to UR. Okay, let me write that side here. So QU is congruent to UR. I could also say that as a result, this arc right here, I'm going to go ahead and mark it with two, even though that's not the right way to do it, just a way of indicating what it is. This arc QT is congruent to this arc TR. Okay, you follow? Um, what else could I say? Well, I could also then say that if that's true, then this is also true over here. SQ, the arc SQ, is congruent to the arc SR or RS, however you want to look at that. Okay, so I have a couple things that are congruent because I know these are um, perpendicular lines and that is a diameter there. Okay, moving down to number 12. Number 12, it says to start, oh, it says to start, find the value of X. So we're looking in this case here to find out what is the value of this line right there. Okay, so I have a triangle, I have this little arc, I have this diameter coming through it, I have a chord over here, got a 90 degree angle there. Alright, 
So, because of what we talked about before, if this is a 90 degree angle, okay, coming off of that, then I know that it's going to bisect that chord into two equal parts. So just for the sake of, of space here, I'm going to draw this a little bit larger. Okay. So there's my 90 degree angle. I'm just kind of moving over there. This is still my X. Because this is 12 and it cuts it in half, I know if I cut it in half, I can have a length here of 6. That's half of 12. Okay, you good with that so far? The diameter is 15, which means that this portion right here is half of the diameter, which would be half of 15 is 7.5. So now I have a triangle, a right triangle, with an A squared, or an A, a B, and a C. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, to solve this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, in order to determine what is the value of X. Well, my A is still X, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that as an X squared. And I'm going to add to it my B, which is 6 squared, and make that equal to 7.5. Squared. Okay, so when I multiply those things out, what I end up with is I get um, I get 36 over here. 7.5 squared. Not sure what 7.5 squared is, so I'll take out my handy dandy calculator. Let's see what is 7.5 squared. 7.5 times 7.5 gives me 56.25. 56.25, and I have an x squared here. So now I will subtract 36 from both sides, and I have x squared equals 20.25. To get the x by itself, I take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 20.25 is x equals 4.5. So I did all that work to just basically say that the line right there from the midpoint of the circle to this point of the chord is 4.5. Okay. And that's all you're being asked to do on that problem. Let's look at number 13, the last one you want to look at today. 13 took me a second to look at it. And a lot of these things, they really are just, it's a visual thing. Can you see what's going on? I looked at it first and then I went, hmm, well, I'm not quite sure. I know that's a 4. I know this cuts in, in half, so this line right here would be 10. But I don't have a triangle. And I had to take a moment to go, oh, yeah. This is just a radius, and a radius is the same length from the midpoint of a circle to the edge is the same distance. So while this is x, that just means I could draw a different radius from here to here, and I can call it x. And these two x's are identical because it's just a radius, and a radius will always be the same. So now I'm just left with simply the same thing. I have a triangle, a right triangle, with an a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Does that make sense? This line, even though you don't see a triangle in the original, it, they, I can make a triangle because I can just change this. I mean, I could draw a line over here and call it X. I could draw a line over here and call it X. That wouldn't help me, but I'm still making just another line that is congruent. So now I can go ahead and go back to my old system. 4 squared plus 10 squared equals X squared. And this gives 16 plus 100 equals X squared. 116 equals x squared. I take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 116 is 10.77. They want you to round to the nearest tenth, so that becomes 10.8. All right. So just kind of look at it visually and say, what else is going on here that I might need to figure out? Okay. So you'll notice that's going to be the same idea over here for number 15 as well. They don't form a triangle, but you do have a diameter. A radius is half of a diameter, right? So one little portion here would be 12, and you could put that wherever you wanted to make a triangle to make that work. All right, that's it. Have a great day.